All right, guys, welcome back to part two of building the Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we did some basic project setup. And in this video, what I wanted to focus on was setting up a GitHub repository, aka source control, talking through it, as well as creating a few more files here. So before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below, throw a comment down there for that YouTube algorithm, and let's jump right in. So this is exactly where we left off. One thing I wanna call your attention to on the left-hand side, Xcode is actually by default configured with uh, source control, it'll actually create your repo for you locally. And you might see that you've got this blue line here. And if I click it, you'll see that it'll not only select the stuff on the right, and there's two options here. We can show a change or discard changes. Now, this is actually uh, referring to source control. So once we start uh, saving our work by committing and pushing it, you'll see the changes show up here. We can actually revert stuff to prior state. So if you're not familiar with source control, think of it as a way to bookmark and save your code. And you can basically push it to the cloud and just get it um, on any machine as long as you're able to log into your account. So cool, so that all being said, we're gonna actually start by closing Xcode here. Go ahead and open up terminal on your computer. And what we wanna do is we wanna go into the folder where our project resides, which in my case is on desktop. And then we just called it Rick and Morty, super creative, I know. And what Xcode has done, and it should have done it for you, is already initialized a git repo. So if we go ahead and do git branch, you'll see that we're already on our main branch. If you don't see this and it's complaining, what you can go ahead and do is run a git init and that'll create and initialize a git repository in here. If you do an ls-a, one thing you'll notice is that we have this .ds store file, which is basically junk, and we're gonna get rid of it momentarily. And then we also have the .git folder. So what we wanna do is we're gonna run git status and we'll see a bunch of our files that we've added here. And we're gonna add all the stuff we wanna save. So we're gonna say git add dot, which will stage everything. And if you do a status again, it'll make it green. And we're gonna go ahead and commit and push this to our remote repository that I still need to create. Now, before we do that, one thing you'll notice, if I can find it somewhere in this list, you'll see that we are actually also saving that DS store file. And we don't wanna do that. We're gonna ignore it in a second. But let's first commit our initial code here from the previous video. We're gonna create a commit. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, created Rick and Morty uh, project. We'll go ahead and do that. And if you jump back to Xcode, which I have conveniently closed, let me open that up again, you'll see that blue line is now gone next to the line numbers here. It's because all that work is committed. If I make a new line, you'll see that it pops up here and this is showing our change. So let's discard this particular change and it'll revert it like so. So if we try to go ahead and push this by doing a git push, it's gonna yell at us. It's gonna say, hey, where the heck are you trying to push this to? Because you don't have a remote repository set up yet. So that brings us to the browser. We're gonna open up a tab and head on over to github.com. You can also use other providers like Bitbucket, but GitHub is by far the most popular. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a new repository. If you don't have an account here, you can create one for free. I'm already logged into mine. I'm gonna hit this new button right here. We're gonna pick an owner, the account that should own this repo. Um, I'm gonna use my personal. I've got one for my work, which is Facebook, and then one for iOS Academy. Um, so I'll use my personal here, and I'm gonna call this Rick and Morty iOS app, like so. Looks like that is available, which is cool. We'll add a description here. I'm gonna say a Swift app for Rick and Morty. And we'll go ahead and make sure this is a public repository looking good. We can leave all of this uh, unchecked. We're not gonna have a license or a git ignore. And we're gonna create all this stuff uh, manually. So let's leave that all as is. I'm gonna go ahead and click uh, create repository here. And it'll actually give you some instructions to type into your folder. So it's telling us to initialize um, you know, a git, uh, git repo, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just copy this, git remote add origin, and then the URL to this repo. We'll jump back to terminal, and I'm gonna paste this, and we're gonna try to push our code again. Except this time we get a different error. It's basically saying we should be using this, telling git that, hey, push this main branch to the remote origin, which is upstream. So when we do that, we should see it successfully grab everything, 
create a new branch and it's pushed it to our repo. If we come back here and refresh the page, we'll see that our code is in fact here. And if you actually navigate to this repo URL, which I'll stick in the description, you will actually see the code. Now, it would be pretty cool if we had a nice description here, AKA what we call a readme file, which is a markdown file. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do in here is create a readme file by saying touch readme.md. And I'm also gonna say touch.gitignore. So the readme file just lets you add basically a markdown uh, description so you can add you know, any information in there about the project. And the git ignore is a special file that lets you tell git what files to not you know, um, keep track of and include in your commits and pushes. So we're gonna first open up the readme. You can open it up in Xcode or any other IDE. Adam is the one that I prefer. It's a free IDE you can find online. It's pretty great. So we'll go ahead and open this up and I'm just gonna add some mark down here. You can follow along. I'll call this the Swift Rick and Morty app. And this is a full featured iOS app showcasing the Rick and Morty API. And we'll add some bullet points here, what we're building. So written in Swift, we're gonna unit test it. So unit tested, uh, follow, series on YouTube, and I'll just stop there for now. I'll fill this out later. And let's go ahead and close this file. Let's open up terminal again, and we're gonna open once again an atom, the git ignore file. And the only file that we care to ignore is the .ds store file. Now this is a basically just like junk file that Mac OS will by default dump in every folder. It's not of any value, so we're just gonna ignore it. So cool, so now that we've got that, once again, if you do a git status, you'll see those are two new files. So we're just gonna stage both of them like so. And we're gonna add a commit message here. We're gonna say, uh, let's go ahead and say, uh, added readme and git ignore. And then we're also gonna want to push it. So we're gonna add a semicolon to add this command and just do a git push. And like that, it should stage commit and push. So if we come back to GitHub and we refresh this, we should see our readme here as well as our git ignore file in here. So cool, let's see how we're doing on time. All right, we got through that pretty quickly. So let's actually jump into the project now and do some more setup stuff. Um, what I'll call out here, whoops, looks like I went back here. What I will call out here is the fact that we will be uh, committing and pushing our code at the end of every video, assuming I remember. So I will try to my best to link this in the description so you can actually see what we wrote in real time as we uh, write it out. So let's jump back to my first tab here, which is the Rick and Morty documentation. And let's talk about what we're going to need, what files we're going to need to actually build out the API calls. So you'll see here that at the top under the introduction, there is a REST and a GraphQL variant for this API. We're gonna be using REST and we're not gonna go into GraphQL. The TLDR is there are two different mechanisms for requesting data from a server. Um, I encourage you to Google it if you're interested, but we'll stick with REST. The important thing that I wanna draw your attention to is we have characters, locations, and episodes. And the way that this API works is we have this base URL here, which is HTTPS Rick and Morty API.com slash API. And let's say we want to go ahead and get all the characters from the service. If you click it, you'll see an example here, but essentially it's just changing the path here in our actual URL. So it adds an endpoint for character, such as the case for location as well, if I'm not mistaken such as also the case for episode. So one thing that we can go ahead and figure out is that we really only have one base URL and what we really wanna be changing whenever we make a request is the particular endpoint and perhaps some additional data. So for example, when we're gonna to want to eventually get the information for a single character, you'll see here that this is character and there's some other ID that goes in front of it, presumably the character ID. So let's go ahead and create some files here in our project to model this. So we're gonna keep things organized. We already have a API client here. So the first thing we're going to create is a file that will be called rm service, 
And this RM service, RM for Rick and Morty, will essentially be responsible for actually making API calls. Now, when we make an API call, instead of having to pass in the raw data, it'd be nice if we can define a native type to build out a request. So that brings us to the next file we'll create here, which will be a RM request. All right, looking pretty good. Now, what else will we need? So we're gonna actually write some code today in this, in both of these files. So what I'm gonna create in here is going to be a final class, and this will be an RM service. And when we build out this application, I'm gonna build this initially as a singleton, and then we're gonna also briefly look at dependency injection once we kind of build this out and we wanna clean up all of our code. So a singleton you can access from anywhere in the whole app, which makes your life easier in terms of development. So to do that, we're going to say static let shared. We're going to have a shared instance of this. And this is going to be an RM service. We're also going to privatize the initializer so everyone is forced to use this shared instance like so. Basically, we're going to have a single function on here from the top of the top of my head that's going to say uh, public func. And we're going to go ahead and execute a request. And what we want to go ahead and do here is also have some sort of callback, a completion handler, if you will, which will give us some data back. I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna structure this. So for now, we're gonna make it an escaping closure where we get no arguments back, returning void. Let's see why this is yelling at me here because request needs a type. Now we haven't created it yet, but we're gonna have a RM request momentarily. So let's jump into this file. And we're going to create a final class called rm request and this is going to represent a single request right so whatever request we send to this api it should encapsulate all the data things along the lines of you know what endpoint do we want do we have any additional uh, path components for the url etc cetera, etc cetera. so let's create one more file in here and i'm going to go ahead and call this rm endpoint and an, end, an endpoint, like we kind of saw in the documentation there, is basically the various paths we can go down to get data. So we have three. We have location, character, uh, and episode. And let me just make sure that they are not, in fact, plural. So it looks like this is uh, episode singular. We'll click on this one for location. This one is also singular. And I believe character should be singular as well. So it would be nice if we had a way to model these three endpoints instead of having to hard code strings everywhere. So an enum is a really good candidate to handle this. We're gonna say this is an RM endpoint. And we're gonna have three cases in here. We're gonna have the first one be character. We're gonna have the next one be location. And the third one we're gonna have is going to be episode. Now, we are going to want a way to represent this in a string when we build out our URL. So what we're gonna say is that this has a raw value type of string. And for those of you that don't know, what that means is when we say value, this will spit out a character as a string. I'm also going to prefix this with a frozen annotation. And in a later video, I'll go into what the heck this is and what it's doing. and that's enough in this particular file. So whenever we build a request, we're gonna be using this in one way, shape, or form. So before we get further into the weeds of the actual API clients, what I wanted to do at the end of this video is I wanna talk a little bit about documentation and how we're gonna document things along the way. So I want this app to really be a really good open source uh, example for folks that are interested in learning how to build apps and whatnot. So one really important thing to do is document all this stuff we write along the way. And it's pretty easy to do as you're building since you don't have the overhead to do it later on. So the best way to do this is when you define anything, you're gonna hold on a Mac, well, hopefully you're on a Mac because we are in Xcode, you're gonna hold command option backslash, and this will automatically have Xcode pop in a autocomplete doc string for you. And we're gonna try to do this for everything that we type so we have some documentation and we can always come back and improve it. So what is an RM service, right? Essentially, we're gonna add some descriptions to all this stuff. I might run through it fast and not bore everybody, but I digress. Let's go ahead and just add some of these. So this will be our primary 
API service object to get Rick and Morty data. This guy here will be our shared singleton uh, instance. This will be a privatized constructor. Here, we're gonna want to eventually change this. So we're gonna go ahead and say, send Rick and Morty API call. We're gonna have a request instance, and this will be our callback with data or error. And let's jump into the next file. So here, we're gonna have a object that represents a single API call. We'll jump to the next one. Here we're going to have represents unique API endpoints. And I'll also do these cases. So endpoint to get character info. It's annoying to initially type out all the documentation, but I promise you, you'll thank yourself in the future, especially as you build your own stuff and you forget after a few months what the heck you built and how you built it. So it certainly does help. And uh, unfortunately, I learned this lesson the hard way over the past several years. So definitely don't skip out on docs. So let's jump into the controllers here. And I'll only do the class here since uh, these functions are kind of self-explanatory for now. So this will be uh, controller to house tabs and root tab controllers. So here we have the character controller. Controller to show and search for uh, characters already. And let me actually copy and paste this since it'll basically be the same for the other ones. And we'll say location, and here we'll say episodes, and then here we will say settings. So I'll change this here. This one is going to be for locations, and this one here is going to be for episodes, and then finally, this one here is going to be a, a controller to show various app options and settings. So let's go ahead and build. Command B, everything should be compiling, hopefully. And that's where I'll probably pause this video. So just to recap, we went ahead and created a Git repo. We committed and staged and pushed our code from the last video. We set up some source files here by looking at what this API offers to us. And now before we wrap it up, what we're going to do is we're gonna run git status. We'll see that we have some new files here. We have some modified files. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a git add dot, which will stage everything. I am going to add a commit, and this is going to be, let's see what should, the commit message should be. We'll say added doc strings and API related files. We'll want to push this like so, and everything is good to go. Let's come back here to our repo. Let me just refresh this and make sure that we do see a push which we can see right here. So iOS Academy dev pushed right here a commit. So this was done uh, just now. And if, if I refresh this, it'll say in like a minute that it was pushed a minute ago, uh, but I, I digress. So let's, uh, let's wrap up the video right there. So we've got us in a pretty good state, in a good spot. In the next video, what I'll start doing is we'll start building each of these out iteratively. So maybe we'll start by focusing on characters and we'll build out the functionality. We're gonna focus on keeping our views and everything nice and modular so these, these view controllers don't become you know huge, multi-thousand lined, massive view controllers. So that is all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't dropped a like down below, make sure to do so before clicking away. Comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new here into iOS, hit that subscribe button to follow along. Share the video, share the series. Appreciate you guys watching. I will see you in the next one.